Welcome back everybody, my name is Token D Rock here with another video. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the IRS looking at other ways to achieve their tax goals or achievements, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be looking at a supply shock coming to Bitcoin in the near, near future, so stay tuned. A few other stuff. First things first, gotta take a look at the market. Bitcoin has been moving sideways like crazy as of late. Hasn't really found a proper holding. It looked like it found some support roughly around 40,500. Um, we'll see if that holds. Right now it's at 41.5. If you're buying altcoins, you know the drill. Spread out those buys, dollar cost average, and pay attention to Bitcoin didn't hear enough FUD from out of China. Now we have some more FUD for you. E-commerce giant Alibaba officially announced just this past Monday that its platform will prohibit the sale of cryptocurrency miners and suspend categories for blockchain, blockchain miners and accessories from its website starting on October 8th. In addition to stopping the sales of crypto mining devices, Alibaba will impose a ban on using its platforms to sell major cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, as well as smaller coins like Quark. The new restrictions involve but are not limited to crypto mining related hardware and software as well as relevant tutorials, guides, and strategies. The announcement noted any sellers that continue listing crypto miners or relevant products on Alibaba's platforms after October 15th will face penalties under applicable rules. Some of the listed penalties include blocking stores, freezing and closing merchant accounts for maliciously evading the new rules, like intentionally placing relevant products into other categories. Alibaba released a statement saying members have responsibility for complying with relevant laws and regulations applicable to any country of sale. We will keep track of policy changes in each country and adjust our control policies accordingly, the company stated. Alibaba did not immediately respond to Cointelegraph's request for comment, and this move came soon after the Chinese government announced a new set of measures to combat the crypto adoption, declaring all crypto-related transactions illegal in the country on Friday. In response to renewed crypto crackdown, major crypto exchanges such as Binance and Huobi subsequently halted some services in mainland China, while Sparkpool, the second largest Ethereum mining pool in the world, announced a total shutdown of operations. My takeaway from this article is that the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, the government of China will do anything in its power to stifle the adoption of crypto within its borders not just within its borders, but around the world. If you take a look at things China claims it doesn't like, what does it do? Well, it replicates those things and makes it its own, so that way it has full control over its citizens via whatever medium they are using, whether it's a social media app, uh, you have the digital yuan, you know, a CBDC that's rolling out in China right now. I mean, let's take a look, you guys. We take a look, they didn't like, um, you know, Facebook, so what did they make? They made WeChat, it's their version of Facebook over in China. The, the government can run the platform as they see fit. They can censor people that are, you know, contesting what the establishment is putting out via media and stuff like that. I'm not gonna even try and pronounce this, but look, they made a Chinese Twitter, they made their own version of TikTok, they made their own version of YouTube. I mean, China has a history of doing stuff like this, so it doesn't really surprise me that Alibaba is positioning it itself in a way to still work um, closely or alongside with the CCP. That's just my takeaway. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Headed back to the U.S. for our next bit of news, the United States Internal Revenue Service, or IRS, continues to propose new tax reforms to regulate the crypto investments in the United States with the latest notice sharing tax obligations for the marijuana industry. The notice signed by the IRS Small Business slash Self-Employed Division Commissioner Delon Harris reflects the priorities of the United States Federal Agency 
to ensure cryptocurrency tax compliance among local businesses that grow, distribute, and sell cannabis. Commissioner Harris said that the use of cryptocurrencies in the cannabis industry is one of the top enforcement priorities of the IRS, stating, those who use it, referring to cryptocurrencies, need to understand that the IRS considers it property and that there are gains that are taxable. The IRS commissioner recommended cannabis businesses work with reputable exchanges for converting cryptocurrencies into U.S. dollars. They're going after a lot of crypto investors, um, you know, via taxes and stuff like that to come up with the money for this tremendous infrastructure deal that they're trying to push through. Not to mention... On September 13, Democrats in the House of Representatives proposed new tax initiatives that would increase the tax rate on long-term capital gains. If approved, the law will increase crypto taxes for certain high-income individuals by 5%. The bill also recommends a surtax of 3.8% on net investment income, bringing up the tax rate to 28.8% for select investors. Additionally, the new tax plan will impose the wash sale rule on cryptocurrencies and other digital assets, which prevents investors from claiming capital gains deductions. Currently, U.S. lawmakers suspect crypto investors of using wash sales to manipulate the capital gains of their portfolio. It just blows my mind that the IRS read everything Congress wants to do with regulating crypto and was like, oh, whoa, 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 those are rookie numbers. Here at the IRS, we need some more moolah, okay? How can we get this moolah? Okay, well, let's put on our binoculars and take a look at what people over in the marijuana industry are doing. Are they buying and trading crypto? Are they investing in the crypto? God forbid they do that, you know? <laughs> God forbid they don't keep their U.S. dollars in the bank. You know, which you can't even do as a marijuana industry because it's still federally illegal. It literally makes zero sense, you guys. Again, I'm all for sensible regulation, but in my humble opinion, this is an overstep, okay? Do not be fooled, you guys. I get it. The narrative you are being sold by the media and the institutions is that crypto is just a fad. Bitcoin isn't a tangible asset there's no utility case for bitcoin and other cryptos oh the infrastructure deal is going to kill crypto it's going to go to zero oh china kicked out their miners bitcoin's going to zero oh china banned the trading of crypto it's going to zero it's all fud it's all there to drive fear uncertainty and doubt into the minds of investors like you and me. That way we sell our crypto and that way the big dogs get to buy at a discounted price. It's really that simple. Why can I say all of this with such confidence? Well, take a look at the metrics, you guys. The Bitcoin balance on exchanges for the past three years, that is highlighted in this orangish yellow line. The grayish line represents the price of Bitcoin the past three years. Look at where we are. We are at the lowest point for Bitcoin available on exchanges for purchase since roughly three years ago, back in quarter three, quarter four of 2018. Why is this a big deal? Well, in my opinion, we are still in a bull cycle, meaning I think Bitcoin will surpass its previously established all-time high as of this year, roughly 65K. I think we're going to shoot past that. Not to mention, more and more people are starting to realize that Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. There's only a finite amount of Bitcoin, roughly 21 million. It's not like the US dollar. It's not like the digital yuan. It's not like the, the British pound that can be printed to oblivion by banks and the institutions, which devalues the currency. Bitcoin's not about that. There's only a finite amount of Bitcoin, meaning once it's all mine, there's no making more. And so more and more people are starting to realize that Bitcoin is a store of value. And this amount of Bitcoin, you know, is just going down slowly but surely. And as we get closer to previous, previously established all-time highs like we did earlier this year, the price is just going to shoot up because there's going to be less Bitcoin 
available for purchase on exchanges. There's no question, in my opinion, that Bitcoin will hit 75K by the end of this bull run. 100K is my absolute ceiling. I know some people are calling for 150K, 125K. I think 75K to 100K is my conservative range that Bitcoin will reach by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm pretty bullish. I still think we're in a bull run. We're kind of like in a mini bear run right now. It's really more like a correction because we had so many green days. If you take a look at the daily chart, we had so many green days from that spring back in July. So I'm pretty bullish on Bitcoin. I think crypto's here to stay. That about does it for today's video, everyone. If you enjoyed the video and learned something new, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Got some links down below, so please check them out. Earn some passive income on the crypto you're hodling long term over on Celsius and BlockFi. Get trading today on Binance US. Stay up to date with crypto prices over on Coin Market Cap. Stay up to date with your favorite altcoin events on Coin Market Cal. Follow us over on our Facebook group for occasional callouts. Until next time, everyone. I hope all of you have a wonderful day and take care. Bye.